Well, the Big Blue doesn't get much bigger than this as we see out the Liberty A-League regular season with a fixture that has all to play for. Sydney FC welcome Melbourne victory to Leichhardt Oval and the equation is simple. A win for Sydney sees them lift the Premier's plate for the fourth year in a row. An incredible feat never done before. And for Melbourne victory, the stakes could not be higher. A draw, just the one point, will secure their spot in the top six. Anything less, and it's season over for victory. Alicia Ferguson joins me in commentary this afternoon. And Ish, what a cracking end to the Liberty A-League season. Yep, happy Easter, everyone. What a wonderful way to finish the A-League women's season. To these teams, you know, Sydney FC going for their fourth premiership in a row, a huge opportunity for them to capitalise on what's been a great... Um, uh, what a great <laughs> under Ante Juric and obviously Melbourne victory. You know, they're under pressure. They've been inconsistent this season. They'll be one of finishing on a high. Well, huge game ahead of us. Let's have a look at the Sydney FC formation for this afternoon. They make just the one change to the starting 11 as Shea Holman returns to the side with Abby Lemon dropping to the bench. Margot Chavez slots into the left back position in an otherwise unchanged starting team. A big omission on the bench today as bright youngster Matty Caspers drops out of the match day squad with a thigh injury. Indy Dos Santos drops out too with Zara Kruger and Aideen Keane replacing them on on the bench. Well, there's three changes for the travelling victory today. Young Matildas Jess Nash and Alana Murphy return to the starting 11, as does Beatty Goad, while Emma Checker, Paige Zoyce and Leah Privatelli drop to the bench. Matilda Elise Keller Knight returns to the matchday squad after a concussion. Rosie Curtis and Ava Brydis drop out of the matchday squad altogether. Well, Courtney Vine has been recalled to the Matilda squad to take on Mexico week after next. 17 matches, 10 goals, 6 assists for the season. Her best A-League season to date. She's got 5 goals in her last 4 games and has well and truly hit her straps at the very pointy end of the season. Ish, what are you expecting from Courtney this afternoon? Another big performance. I think it's just great to see after a couple of injury struggles earlier in the season, it's just great to see Courtney playing with that freedom and expression that she does. And she's just added so many more elements to her game, being in the Matildas uh, set up for the last couple of years. You know, she's scoring headers, she's using her pace. She's not just that fast player anymore. And she's such an important player to the Sydney FC attack. Well, speaking of important players, another player recalled to the Matildas squad is 31-year-old Emily Gilnick. 12 matches for Gilnick, 7 goals and 2 assists. And when you talk about hitting pace at the right time, each Gilnick has done exactly that. Well, we've probably got two players on the different end of the spectrum, haven't we? Courtney Vine coming off such a great World Cup. Emily Gilnick missing out on that World Cup squad, being really disappointed. Again, both players struggled with injuries early on in the season. But seeing Em come back and score a few worldies and getting some consistency, and she's being called back into the Matilda squad for the upcoming international break. And again, both of these players are going to be the players to watch in this game today. Yeah, key attacking outlets this afternoon and looking after proceedings today. In charge at the centre of the action is Casey Rybout, vastly experienced centre referee. She's assisted this afternoon by Maggie Price and Amber Morris. Kelly Jones is our fourth official for this afternoon's fixture. Looks like a really healthy crowd spilling in at Leichhardt Oval, which is fantastic to see. A warm afternoon in Sydney, 26 degrees. But things will be heating up on the field in just a few short moments. As referee Rybelt oh, no. takes to the centre of the pitch and teams jog on their way out. Shay Holman, quality young player, returning to the starting. 11 this afternoon, the 18-year-old, but she's become quite a key part of Ante Juric's midfield. Well, obsessed. The word Ante Juric uses to describe his relationship with football, and it's that obsession that has Juric and his defending champions on the, t on the cusp of history. A fourth Premier's plate balancing in the air should his side get the job done this afternoon. Jeff Hopkins cut a relaxed figure throughout the week as he joked ahead of the game that it was just a normal week for victory coming into finals under such circumstances. The team, quite familiar with approaching finals football in the manner they have, always finding a way through. And he noted his sides. Nice balance of youth and exuberance as we get underway here at Leichhardt Oval for the Big Blue. Sydney FC taking on Melbourne victory. A Premier's plate up for grabs.
a place in finals football as well. Melbourne victory, they need a point from this afternoon's encounter, Ish. How are you thinking they're going to approach this one? Well, I think look, the intensity is going to be pretty frantic to begin with, isn't it? Sydney FC throughout this season have always wanted to press the opposition quite high. Obviously, Melbourne victory trying to utilise that pace of Emily Gilnick in that wide area and Rachel is attacking prowess through the middle. Great CB to go back in as well. I think she's been exceptional when she's come back into the squad. Indeed, she has been go Excellent in the middle of the part for the victory. Of course, she took that six week or so hiatus to complete her medical studies. So a bright, bright future, if not in football, then definitely in the medical industry. But fantastic to see her out on the park for victory as they surge forward an early ball through. Jada Wyman protecting her goal as she has done so fantastically all season. Nine clean sheets, Jada Wyman, the goalkeeper for Sydney FC. And understandable why she is called up to train with the Matildas as part of the extended squad. Now Sydney with their foot back on the ball. Just looking to build as they so often do through the middle of the park. Elise Pass has picked up really nicely. Here's Chavez streaming forward. Has a bit of space in front. Margot Chavez can release Vine. Now Hawksby. Abini crossed into the box, steered away by Captain Morrison. And for now, Melbourne Victory can dispel the pressure, but it's a bright start from the Sky Blues. Still alive with Courtney Vine. Now Abini. Sustained pressure from Sydney, looking to stream forward. Princess Abini takes a little deflection. And again, Victory just struggling to get out of pressure, but they do so with that touch. But McLean. Redwell intercepted. A quite transitional opening little passage here, Ish. That's exactly what we've seen. Sydney FC pushing on. Well, Courtney Vine, she'll stream into space. Alana Murphy being called into defensive action. They'll hardly take a breath. It's nodded away from McLean, but Rachel Lowe against her former side, just reaching out, and it looks like she has connected with McLean. I don't think any malice intended by the challenge, but nonetheless, that one stings. No, absolutely not. But it's exactly what we've seen with the commitment to Sydney FC's, not just their defence, but actually attacking. Tori Toomuth was pushed up there. Charlotte McLean stepping in front. They really want to press this Melbourne victory team high, trying to win it back in di difficult areas for them to defend. That commitment by Charlotte McLean, as you say, no malice in that, but that real intensity from Sydney FC that we've seen for a lot of this season, exactly what you say, Ante Europe obsessed with getting his fourth premiership, really proving, and especially after what they've had, quite a difficult season with so many injuries, wanting to prove all the doubt is wrong. Nice to see a little hand of apology there from Rachel Lowe, of course, a former Sky Blue player herself, made the move across to Melbourne victory this season and it's been her most prolific yet for the midfielder. That nudge a little too strong there from Matilda Courtney Vine. Alana Murphy back in the match day squad today returning from her duties with the young Matildas. Victory happy to play out under a bit of pressure. Albini just leading the line. Tapalonia can switch the point of play and now Rankin inside from Go to Murphy. Holman tracking back, steers that out for a victory throw. Taking quickly, Rankin, little one two with Go. Dapolonia with a bit of space gets a toe away but it's steered out by the American and Jordan Thompson. And that's fallen rather kindly for the Sky Blues to drive forward. Kaylee Tallon Henneker, quite the revelation, the young player, releasing Chavez. First time cross into the box. A go over the head of everyone, and Courtney Vine with a bit of work to do, does exactly that. Cuts in on the right. Good strength and speed shown by Vine. It's prodded away from Dapolonia, and quite the energetic start. Yeah, nothing we didn't already expect with so much on the riding on the line. Well, Hawksby does get a shot away. Not too much of it. And it's easy pickings for victory goalkeeper Courtney Newbon. 
You can already see this fluidity of movement from Sydney FC. Princess Sabini a couple of times has floated out into those wide areas. Talon Henniker on that left-hand side has, as you say, been a great revelation for Sydney FC as well, but they want to win the ball further up the pitch. You can see them constantly stepping in front of the players, which makes it very difficult to defend in those transition moments. Well, the run from Chavez was good. Picked up the ball in a good position, but the pass just lacking a little quality on that occasion. And Five, six minutes into this opening half, Almost feels like it's just starting to settle in, but it really has been quite a frantic start, and that is a hefty challenge from Holman. Victory back with possession once more. Morrison driving infield. That pass a little shallow, but Gilnick's done well. Tori Hansen combining on a centre half pair in and Kayla Morrison. Rankin is dispossessed. It's poked out by Tumuth, who's been excellent at the back for Sydney this year, starting all games, and is one of the first names you can see in, on the team sheet for Ante Juric's side, Tori Tumuth. I think both these wide flanks are going to be the key areas for both teams attacking-wise. Beatty Goat on this left-hand side, Emily Gilnick on the right for Melbourne Victory, and Talon Henniker on the left-hand side for Sydney FC and Courtney Vine as well. Really trying to exploit that space because it's going to be so congested through the middle with so many good players who want to try and get those one-twos around the 18-yard box. Well, some great battles ensuing all across the field. Dapolonia chances her luck from distance. Comfortable save down to her right for Wyman who has heavily strapped left thigh. The Sydney FC custodian falls back with victory. Beanie's done well. Picks the pocket of Alana Murphy. Streams forward, but only into a wall of victory players. Does find a release pass in Mackenzie Hawksby. Now Talon Henniker. Hawksby picks up the ball again. Driving into the 18-yard box. Thumped away from Morrison. Beanie go. Has two missed to beat. Good strength shown on the ball from Tumuth, and it will be Sydney FC free kick. Just the tug of the shirt there you saw from Beattie Goad. See, both these teams really, I mean, this tempo, it's not gonna, they're not going to be able to maintain it, are they? I mean, we're in the first seven or eight minutes of the game. We're going to have to see one of the teams try and slow the tempo down and then quicken it up again. Always want to make a strong start to these games, but both teams really going at it 100 miles an hour at the moment. Fantastic to hear and to see the atmosphere, the crowd spilling in at Leichhardt Oval. Wonderful turnout already. It certainly adds to the occasion that is a big blue, but also with so much is on the line. Sydney FC back home after a fairly quick turnaround. We know they had that loss midweek to Canberra United, which more or less kept this game alive. Driving through the middle. Now Murphy. Releases Dapolonia. Murphy again to Nash. Young Matilda's combining. Dapolonia lively in this opening passage. Gilnick centering pass. Tumuth has to be careful here. Goad prods it into the hands of Jada Wyman, but that opened up a little favourably to Melbourne victory. Poked forward once more by Hansen. Gilnick gives away the free kick. Well, it was a lovely, nice bit of combination play, wasn't it? Emily Gilnick just trying to play that ball back. Rachel Lowe did. She dropped off. I know I always say this. I always want to see how the attackers really commit to that near post run. Beatty Go nearly just got in there. There was a couple of half shouts for a potential penalty, a bit of contact in the box. Casey Rybert was having nothing of it, but really positive. Well, Courtney Vines first to this ball, first to the strike as well, and it's not far off. Just skewed off the side of the right boot. 
but a long ball over the top from Mackenzie Hawksby that almost caught the Melbourne Victory defence napping. Well, we see it time and time again with Sydney FC. That left to right ball from the centre of midfield into Courtney Vine. I think Courtney's going to be really disappointed she didn't connect with that and actually put the ball in the back of the net. Just spun up a little bit, was spinning away from it, didn't quite catch it. It was still bouncing up rather than coming down, but a great opportunity. That's picked off nicely by Charlotte McLean. Courtney Newborn off her line, first to the ball. Had to be alert to danger. A pass right down the middle after a really handy McLean intercept once more. How often does she do that? Just reading the play so well, nipping in front of her opponent. Well, I mean, it's Courtney Vine 101, isn't it? Just with that pace. And now I'd, I'd say this, I think what she's added to her game is her ability to actually make her runs Give herself a better angle when she's facing towards goal. In case you're over, not, not help happy with one of the victory players here. But just Courtney Vine, as I to say, it's Sydney FC, what they've got is wonderful. Taylor Ray McKenzie Hawks be able to, when they get it in midfield, just have a quick look up and they can play that ball into Courtney Vine. Not too much in this. Emily Gilnick amongst it again. We saw a little tussle in the Newcastle game last week. Just shows how much this game means and how much is on the line. This is a good, tidy position. Kenzie Hawksby, great, great delivery of the ball. Just think she's going to aim that to the far post, and she try and get someone to get a touch on it. Hawksby doesn't clear the line of victory defenders. It still hasn't quite been dealt with here. The offside flag has gone up. It wasn't the best ball in from Kenzie Hawksby. I think she'll be disappointed with that. I don't think there was plenty of Melbourne victory players behind the ball. Too many, you can see most of the Sydney FC, there were three Sydney FC players this far post. Really, probably want to do better in that position. Should be a bit disappointed with that delivery to make the most of that change. Still happy to play out from the back. It's Princess Abini just dictating traffic in the middle of the park. Victory can't quite find a way through the press on that occasion. As I say, Grace, I think all teams in the A-League women really see them attempting to play out under pressure and really trying to test themselves and, and break out of those lines of pressure and high press from the opposition. Victory at the moment have the better of the possession it's just making sure once you get to that back to that middle, to that front third, making the most of those chances. Here's Chidia. It's come off the foot of Chavez, so it will be a victory throw. Margo Chavez slotting back into that left fullback position today, having played the holding midfield role last week. And she's grown in stature week in, week out for the Sky Blues. Her 10th start of the season, Margot Chauvet, the versatile player for Ante Juric. And to be fair, Juric has had to reach into some of his depth this season with a few injuries to his players. And Sydney, look for a way forward. That's a nice ball from Abini. First time pass out from Ray. And Vine just assesses the options in front, still with Vine. Now Talon Henneker, the 18-year-old, looks for a bit of space blocked by Hansen for the first corner of the afternoon. It will be a sky blue one. That was good foot defending by Tori Hansen. We've seen Talon Henneker do that before. She wants to get it on her left foot. Courtney Vine just popping it out to her here, but she always wants to cut in on her right foot, try and curl that ball into the far corner. She scored a previous goal against Western Sydney Wanderers like that, but it was good defending in the end. Well, Hawksby to take a little stutter step, a short corner. Now a beanie, first time around the corner, searching for the run of Courtney Vine, a training ground move you suspect with that one. Sydney FC throw, here's Chauvet. A beanie held up by Murphy. Now Dapolonia. 
looks to stream out. It will be a victory free kick. Gosh, we're only 15 minutes in, Grace. This really has been played at a frantic pace, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. What an opening 15 minutes. You can see both sides, just the energy, the intensity that this opening passage has been played up. And you mentioned it, each that it's really hard to sustain for a full 90 minutes. So it feels as though that edge is just starting to come out of the game and both teams perhaps trying to get their foot on the ball somewhat and settle in. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where it really becomes crucial that you control the tempo of the game. Well, that's a nice release pass from Newborn to Nash. Now first time cross from Gilnick. Well, how about that distribution from goalkeeper Courtney Newborn to find Jess Nash on that right wing? It's absolute quality. I've said this time and time again how important the goalkeepers have been and how their level of quality in the A-League women's this season. But it's really those diagonal balls into those wide areas where the players are on the touchline are actually the new way that the goalkeepers really inject themselves into the attacking play. In swinger, it will be from Beatty Goad. Victory first to it on the line, blocked, but not on the second time of asking. Victory have taken the lead in the big blue. Their first shot at keeping finals hopes alive and it's Alana Murphy who steers it into the back of the net. Well, Kayla Morrison got the little flick on. It was well defended. Talon Henneker just kind of bounced off her more than anything, almost caught her by surprise. Couldn't do too much about it. Hit her in the top of the thigh. Alana Murphy on hand with the quickest reflex and reaction there just to tuck it home. But Kayla Morrison did really well there. Just not trying to do too much, just trying to help the ball on into that far corner. Made it very difficult for Talon Henneker to get a good clearance on it. Well, it was a great corner, a great glancing header from Kayla Morrison and Alana Murphy there on the spot to clean up her first goal of the season. She hasn't scored many across the course of her A-League career, just the two, so that's her third. The young Matilda returning from her time overseas with Leah Blaney's young Matilda squad. Well, what kind of response can Sydney produce? Here's Matilda Courtney Vine driving inside. Victory can do enough, but that pass is a little unconvincing from Dapolonia. Holman still with possession for Sydney. Thompson looking for Chavay. Chavay's done well. Here's Talon Henneker. Has two victory players. Nash. Well defended. Good use of the body there by Jess Nash. Victor would be really happy to get that one goal advantage, especially knowing that Sydney FC constantly want to press very high. Beat you go, great ball into the box. Just nice glancing header. Kayla Morrison didn't try and do too much, just got in front of her defender, tried to help that ball on, just fell awkwardly into the thigh of Talon Henneker. Nice little tucked away finish from Alana Murphy as well. Talk about that holding midfield role. So I really think the victory have missed Elise Kellen Knight and Alana Murphy when she's been on that young Matilda's duty. It's such a crucial area to link up play between between defence and attack. Of course, Elise Kellen Knight on the bench this afternoon for the Melbourne victory, having returned from a concussion. Vastly experienced option to come on for Jeff Hopkins' side. Good physical battle there between Abini and Chidiak. Little drop of the shoulder from Nash. Morrison. Still with the high pressure coming from the Sky Blues. Nash needing a bit of support. That's an ox for distance. That first touch from Rachel Lowe just escaped it. In here, Jeff Hopkins really trying to encourage his players to give options at the back when Sydney FC are pressing high and they're trying to play out. Just giving a little call to Alex Chidiak there, try and make herself available at all times. There was a big distance between the defence and the midfield for them to play out, especially when Sydney FC really commit three or four players forward to try and win that ball back. And so a win today, as a reminder, for Sydney FC, hands them their fourth consecutive Premier's plate. A win or a draw for victory has their finals hope stay alive. Here's a beanie trying to trying to thread the needle to Vine. Well read by the victory defence. 
is Hawksby. First time around the corner from Abini. And plenty of football to play just yet. But with this 1-0 lead, as it stands, victory put himself into fourth position, which will bundle Western Sydney Wanderers out of the top six. So there's so much to play for in this afternoon's fixture. Well, this is the beauty of a full home and away season, isn't it, Grace? And really, these last few rounds, there's been so much to play for, as you say. I mean, Western Sydney Wanderers, I'm sure they're watching on <laughs> with bated breath to see the result of this match. Well, interestingly enough, I understand that Western Sydney Wanderers are in the air at the moment, so maybe unable to watch this encounter. They'll be waiting on bated breath when they land. For now, here's Sydney looking for a response, but Talon Henniker has drifted into an offside position. Well, hopefully after the big win over Central Coast Manor, Mariners, the Sydney FC men are watching their women counterparts play, encouraging them to win their fourth premiership. What an amazing achievement that'll be for Ante Urich. Well, that's fallen kindly to Emily Gilnick. She's got space in front, opts for the early cross. Charlotte McLean gets a boot to it. Jordan Thompson with a bit of clean-up work to do and does so obligingly. And well, too, there's a game that kicks off a little later this afternoon. Perth Glory playing host to Melbourne City. Victory go on to win this game. Sydney then wait to see the result of that Perth City game to determine the Premiers. It's proper last round vibes, isn't it? I mean, it's awesome to see that there's so much riding on these last A-League Women Around games. I mean, I think we've had such a, a wonderful season. There's so many ebbs and flows as well and so much quality, especially when so much of the season has had inconsistencies of injuries and also players being away with the young Matildas. But actually the depth and the quality of the squads has really showed and, and also the adaptability I think of the coaches and also the players to actually deal with what's happened people getting transferred in the new season, some big injuries some really unfortunate injuries and obviously international duty Of course the first full home and away season for the Liberty A-League and it's resulted in a pretty exciting final round Waiting on his last two games results to determine the top six. But for now, it's victory in the driver's seat. It's a nice touch from Rachel Lowe. Here's Morrison. Space in front. Pass not meeting the intended outcome. Jamila Rankin, one of just two players to have played all minutes for the victory this season. Just her and Kayla Morrison. Here's Beatty Go. Nice little drop of the shoulder. Taylor Ray intercepts. Rankin. Another throw for Jamila Rankin. Been four seasons prior to this one at the Brisbane Raw, which has started and played every minute of every game this season. It's a good lunge from McLean. Give and go there between Ray and Hawksby. That's a nice play. Ray with the long searching ball over the top. You could see the idea looking for that diagonal pass. And that's typical Taylor Ray as well. And she's come back into the starting team for Sydney FC. Every single time she looks to switch the point of attack and whether that's left to right to try and find Courtney Vine on that occasion, trying to knock it into the space for Talon Henniker. She's such a wonderful attribute. Holding in that deeper midfield space, but always looking to play the ball forward with her first or second touch. Not dissimilar in the final third entries. 13 for Sydney, 11 for victory. Victory made the most of one of those. Lana Murphy finding the back of the net. 25 minutes in. Nice little play. Gilnick involved in a lot, as is, da as is Dapolonia. Now Chavez releases Talon Henniker. 
Only Melbourne Victory shirts in front at the moment. She's got to slow things down, looking for a sky blue shirt. But Victory do enough to get players back and defend as they'll get their chance to stream forward now. Here's Goad. One touch too many and McLean intercepts again. Murphy, fantastic long diagonal ball. Matilda, Emily Gilnick can bear down, get a strike away herself. But that's well kept by Jada Wyman. Just down to her right comfortably. How about that release pass to find Gilnick in space? Yeah, Grace, you can see the game opening up a bit now. Just as you said it, Ish. Here comes victory again. Dapolonia. Still 1-2 to beat. Jada Wyman called into action twice in as many moments. Yeah, and this really is the time, I think, just for both teams to just try and slow things down and just control the tempo a little bit. You can see there's very big distances now between the defence, the midfield and attack. It's been a pretty frenetic start. Well, it sure has. Talon Hennick has done really well to keep that ball in play. Here's a beanie, cuts in on her right. Princess Abini gets a shot away. Always rising, but that opened up very nicely for Princess Abini. Yeah, great to see that positive play as well. What a ball from Alana Murphy into Emily Gilnick. Took that touch, maybe could have had one more. Try and tighten the angle a little bit. Didn't quite catch it as well as we've seen Emily Gilnick. Princess Abini hasn't been on the score sheet for a little while. Really trying to be positive and drive her team forward. But like I said, Grace, and it'll be interesting to see how both teams come out after this drinks break because, well, after this injury break in play, because both teams, I mean, you can't keep up that intensity for so long. We're nearly 27 minutes in. Now is the time where you put, the, put your foot on the ball, try and control the possession and try and control the tempo and make the other team really work to win possession back. At the moment, it's quite transitional, isn't it? And it's getting more transitional as the game's opening up. Yeah, end-to-end end at the moment, asking a lot of running of both sides. Victory in the favour with the possession, which perhaps is something Sydney FC not so used to. A very capable side with the ball at their feet. Hot conditions this afternoon. But I'm sure both sets of players are very grateful for a quick drinks break, just to refresh, take stock, go again final 15 minutes or so of the first half ticks around and even just to break that momentum of that really transitional game of both teams you can reset both teams have gone over they've had a chat with their coaches i'm sure jeff hopkins you can see him remonstrating on the sideline given lots of information ante urich as well just trying to maintain that composure and yeah we've had that frantic start okay one nil down let's just try and keep some possession and, and maintain some momentum I think both these teams have wonderful forwards and a lot of pace in the Emily Gilnick speedy goes, the Courtney Vines. But realistically, if it's going back to front, it makes it a very difficult game to maintain that intensity. Indeed, we talked about warm conditions at Leichhardt this afternoon. Still sitting at about 26 degrees. Plenty of sun on the field. But I'd say a happy crowd has been entertained in this opening half an hour the one goal to show for it. It certainly feels like there's more to come. Of course, these sides did meet a little earlier in the season. In fact, not too long ago, just late January, a 1-1 draw that day with thanks to a Maddie Casper's finish and a Rachel Lowe equaliser. So points could not be separated earlier in the season. And it's just a point today that victory need. Yeah, nice little battle there between Alex Chidiak and Mackenzie Hawksby. Mackenzie Hawksby can be like a little terrier, can't she? She's just like got this high intensity. She even talks at a really quick place, pace, just going 100 miles an hour. She's been a wonderful coming back into the Sydney FC team after a stint with Brighton. Just an absolute workhorse in midfield. Those energy levels as well, really driving their team on. Certainly incredible capacity Mackenzie Hawksby has as free kick from Melbourne Victory. First one didn't quite have the leverage, second 
time of asking and Rachel Lowe has just drifted into an offside position. Yeah, they've had a few of these Melbourne victory, of these runs in behind, a few offsides, which I think they'll be just start getting a little bit frustrated. I think there's some good positional play, there's some good balls being played in, some good runs being made. Just trying to maintain that possession, making sure that you're onside, I think it's just that next level of concentration and focus. by Tal and Henneker is read well by D'Apollonia. Nice little drop on the shoulder there from Morrison. D'Apollonia again. Turns. Morrison looking for Chidiak, but that pass a little misguided. Now Vine brushes off Morrison. Vine with a bit of space, a decision to make. Plays a beanie. A beanie looking for Vine on the return pass. He's met only by well-positioned victory defence. Sydney throw. Might be a corner for Sydney FC. Hasn't been their happiest hunting ground corners across the course of the season. They've scored just the three from corners, Sydney FC, but the likes of Mackenzie Hawksby on set piece delivery. There's always a viable option here. Numbers crowding Courtney Newbon in goal there. Drifted ball in and first to the header is Tori Tumas. She met that really well. Free header, just couldn't direct it goalward. We've seen Mackenzie Hawksby deliver balls in a couple of times. Courtney Vine scored a wonderful volley from a ball similar to this, nice and flat, driven at this diagonal angle. I was having, trying to have a look and see if Courtney, she was in and amongst Courtney Newbon there, whether she was going to tuck back out, but obviously they were trying to get onto the head of Tori Tumuth rather than look for Courtney Vine, with I guess the biggest stature of this Melbourne victory defence. Tori Tumuth, a great target in the middle there, 22-year-old. Chevet. Morrison's read that pass well. The header is only as far as Tumuth. He's bouncing off one another. As Vine takes on Goad. Not too happy with the bit of contact she was receiving, but still with Sydney for a throw in. I think Tori Tumuth was. Claiming for it as well. Beauty Goldness. Not too much in that. A little bit of contact. Not too much in that at all. Not just Beauty Goat agitating there, but nothing wrong in the challenge, says referee Casey Rybell. Now victory throw. Rankin clears for distance. Here's McLean. Long ball over the top. Strength shown by Morrison. The pace of Courtney Vine doesn't quite have enough room to chase that one down. Courtney Vine's just a constant danger on that right-hand side, isn't she? That pace. Kayla Morrison did well here. I did think potentially Courtney could have got in there. She just took that extra touch, just bounced off a little bit. Too much momentum going forward for her. She is such a danger. We've seen it so many times this season with Sydney FC, that quick switch of play, playing that ball in behind, using Courtney Vine's pace and her having that really clinical finish. And Chevet again. Really looking to get forward a lot in this opening half. Tracked back by Gilnick. Be a Melbourne victory goal kick. Well, I haven't conceded many across the course of the season. In fact, Sydney FC, the best defence in the league with just 16 goals against Jada Wyman. But most of those, six of them in fact, have come in this 15-minute passage before half-time. Not to say that it's many, but when you've only conceded 16 across the course of the entire season... I was going to say, Grace, you might put on the commentator's curse. They might be coming <laughs> for you here. But yeah, that's it. It's about concentration levels, though. With this last 15 minutes, this is where teams become more susceptible. And I'm sure that's something that they've done plenty of analysis on, looking at where they've been conceding goals and making sure that they stay switched on for this last 15 minutes, but it is crucial. Big 
Coventry would love to double their lead before the half-time break. Ten minutes to play. Just that intensity just dropping out of the first half, and understandably so, started in quite a flurry. I think you always know a good measure of a game and how entertaining it is that it doesn't mean too many huge clear-cut chances, but it's been end-to-end, -end. there's been plenty happening. Both teams really wanting to play attacking football. Gilnick again, taking on Chavez, comes out on top. Gilnick, ball into the box. Jada Wyman up to task, she so often is. Oh, oh, a cynical little lash out there from Jada Wyman. I think she might be in trouble here. I th oh, well, I'm I must admit, Grace, I'm really, really surprised. I think Jada Wyman is very, very lucky to only get a yellow card there. Well, this is unusual. A ball into the box from Gilnick. Really rudimentary save for Wyman. A little shoulder from Chidiak, but Ish, as a goalkeeper, you can't kick out like that, can you? No, I think it was retaliation. There was a little bit of contact by Chidiak. I think the assistant referee would have had a good view of it. They may be reviewing it here. The assistant referee is now on the byline. I can see Casey Rybelt's having another look. I think personally, Jada Wyman, I think it's a red card or a penalty, depending on what Casey Rybelt's done. Maybe she's done a yellow card and awarded a penalty for it. So we're doing that rather than the double jeopardy. But Jada Wyman, what are you doing there? And, I, and to be fair, I think... I mean, I, I think you maybe take the yellow card and the penalty, but just no need to do that. Well, you're spot on. It can't be double jeopardy in that instance. It can't be a red card and a penalty. But Casey Rybelt was quick to point to the spot and pull to the pocket for the yellow card. So it will be a penalty awarded to Melbourne victory here in a huge moment of this big blue. Yeah, well, there may be a bit of contention about what could have happened here if it was a non-football foul, whether she could have been given a red card and awarded the penalty as well. She's managed to stay on with just the red, the yellow card and the penalty being given. I mean, Rachel Lowe is the penalty taker. Look, I still think it would be a big let off for Jada Wyman because if she got sent off missing the final, the next game of the final series could have been crucial. Well, here's a telling moment. Rachel Lowe standing at the penalty spot. Rachel Lowe to take, Rachel Lowe to finish. She doubles the lead for Melbourne victory. A huge moment in this big blue, a huge moment in this finals race and push for the Premier's plate and Melbourne victory are soaring into the finals. Well, we've seen Rachel Lowe score penalties time and time again. Jada Wyman, I think, very lucky to still be on the pitch. Got a hand to it, picked the right way. We're talking about what the decision from the officials were. There's contention around yellow card penalty. Could it have been a red card? I mean, for the result of this game, it helps Melbourne victory. Definitely doesn't help Sydney FC get their fourth premiership, but I think what's more important, Grace, would it be keeping your number one goalkeeper going into the final series or winning your fourth premiership plate? What a big moment in this game. Well, huge. And a number of permutations to come of it, and I stand corrected. understand it can both be a red card if it's a non-footballing foul and a penalty. So perhaps Jada Wyman in this very instance, very, very lucky to still be on the field. Very, very lucky. I'll look back at this again. What's the more important? What's the end goal? Is it the premiership or is it winning the grand final? Is it lifting the trophy? But let's take all that away. It, was, it wasn't the best decision making from Jada, was it? Really wasn't necessary. A little bit of contact from Chids there, but not enough to kick out. You're the goalkeeper, you got the ball in your hands. Everyone's looking at you, including all the officials. Not one of her greatest decisions. No, just a hot-headed moment there from Jada Wyman, unfortunately. It's gifted Melbourne victory. A nice little buffer leading into the half-time break where we mentioned the concentration needing to be taken into this final 15 minutes ahead of the half-time break. Moments like that. Melbourne City, they're preparing for their game against Perth Glory over in the West. They'll be probably not looking on, they'll be warming up, but the result means that, should this stand, still plenty of football to be played. But it 
gives Melbourne City an opportunity. Still with one hand on the Premier's plate. Yep, exciting last day, isn't it, of the season. I love it when it's full of twists and turns. Bit of controversy, we love that. All big, good, good talking points <laughs> for everyone to argue about over a pint of beer afterwards. But, um, yeah, as you say, that decision-making, that concentration... Sydney FC were just talking about them conceding goals and then they proved us right. They proved themselves right. For Rachel Lowe, 12th of the season, fantastic record. Here's Talon Hennicutt, really well defended by Sarah D'Apollonia. Just good use of the body. And that ball's breeze past McLean. Thompson, nice forward pass to Ray. Betty Goad working hard. Doing well to win possession back from victory. Here's Chidiak. Combining well with Lowe. Apollonia has been very energetic in this opening half. That pass a little narrow. Picked up by Chavez. She too has had a lively first 40 minutes for Sydney. Just trying to find a release pass. Again, looking for Talon Henneker. Shouldered off by Jess Nash. Popkins being very vocal on the sideline, just encouraging the victory team to maintain their composure, stay nice and compact. Going into the halftime break with a 2 0 lead is a very good result. Let's go, just turning out, playing backwards. Assessing the options and decides to drive forward herself this time. You can hear the shouts there of Jeff Hopkins. The full name, you know it's serious. <laughs> That's it. I mean, Jeff Hopkins is my coach of the Brisbane Raw. I definitely got called Alicia Ferguson once or twice in that, <laughs> in that first season. Like you say, you always know. Definitely wants to get a message across when you get the full name yelled out. Now low again, combining well with Nash. Good overlapping run, back to low. Has a first time shot, hits nothing but air. Dabalonia lobs it over to the grateful hands of Jada Wyman. But well, that presented as a very nice opportunity for Melbourne Victory to make it three. Yeah, I mean, the ball was just kind of bobbling up. It was a little bit awkward, but I think Rachel Low, on reflection, she had so much time, there was no one on her. She could have taken a touch. Chavez, cutting, weaving. Great move from Margot Chauvet. Contact in the box. Questions asked. Not quite enough, says Casey Rybelt. Alana Murphy kicks for distance. Now D'Apollonia. Gilnick dropping deep to pick up possession. Hansen. Had Vine lurking. Forced the error. A couple of tired clearances there, weren't there? Chauvet did really well here. I mean, a little bit of contact. I yeah, don't think too much in that. Alana Murphy still had a little glance at the referee to make sure there was no call there before clearing the ball, but a couple of fatigued clearances by Melbourne Victory. I think they'll be happy to get to the halftime break and just have a bit of a breather for what's been, I mean, a extremely entertaining and just end-to-end -end and really intense first half. First time delivery looking from Chauvet. Tina's bundling their way through, and now Vine sizing up two victory shirts in Rankin. Go, nice little turn on the ball from Tori Tumuth. Pass read well from Morrison. Just those little moments. They are there for the Sky Blues. just as she looked to hit that diagonal ball, but Margot Chauvet has been everywhere this afternoon for Sydney. He's Hawksby. Good strength shown by D'Apollonia. Now Nash. Threads the needle. Pass a little heavy from low. Ray, lovely ball over the top. Taylor Ray, Talon Henniker dropping the shoulder onto the right foot. 
but comfortable, composed take from Courtney Newborn. Nice little tidy play in there from Taylor Ray, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Nice vision from Taylor Ray. We've got confirmation of five minutes of stoppage time. And Charlotte McLean will just receive a little attention here from the physio. Seems to have a problem with that left foot. I was just on that. I mean, Taylor Ray playing that ball into Talon Henniker. I really like Talon Henniker on that left hand side. I feel like maybe something she needs to continue adding to her game a little bit is she always wants to cut in on that right foot, doesn't she? So, Taylor Ray, lovely little ball in here. Talon Henniker, she is right footed, takes the touch, wants to cut back inside, can become a little bit predictable. She always wants to try it. She scored a couple of goals from that position, but I think it would be nice to see her really trying to drive towards that byline. Because, again, when you're the defender and it becomes a little bit predictable, you know you always want to bring her back in on the inside. Well, odd boots there for Charlotte McLean. A little uncomfortable for the superstitious amongst us. <laughs> is that making you anxious, Grace? Yeah. Those two? <laughs> I'm fine with that one. Yeah. I hope Charlotte McLean is too. I'm not sure I would be. It'd be, like, it'd be quite off-putting, especially there's such a completely never, different... She's, yeah, got the she's got the new ones. <laughs> she's got the new ones on. back underway for the victory. 90 seconds of that five minutes and perhaps a little more given the boot gate we just saw. Here's Nash. Hurried along by Talon Henniker. Now Holman. Tidy on the ball. First test of the new boots, and they look good to go for McLean. Now Tumuth. That clearance almost found the run of Courtney Vine. Morrison not really having too many options. Sweeps it long. He's Ray. Pods it out to Talon Henniker. First time touch inside to Chevet, who looks for the first time shot. Took a little bit of a deflection. But Nubon saw it early, saw it comfortably. But Chevet, she is covering some ground this afternoon for Sydney FC. Yeah, she's done well down that left hand side. I think really also asking questions of Emily Gilnick and how much she wants to defend. Obviously, Em wants to be as far up the pitch as possible. And Jeff Hopkins giving her a yell before, trying to encourage her. But you mark her out of the game, and that's one attacking option that Melbourne Victory then don't have. Well, it's a little bit of a risk-reward, isn't it? Because on a couple of occasions where Gilnick has gotten forward in time and space, there's been a lot of room in front of her. On that occasion, Hawksby deemed to have given a little too much of a nudge to Chidiak. We've also seen a couple of times Chabay being caught stepping a bit too far forward with that ball in behind. So she's just going to make sure she really reads that play, gets that balance right of trying to be attack-minded and step in front and not allowing that ball to get in behind her. So Gilnick has space. here at Leichhardt Oval. Here, the constant singing and drumming. Very healthy attendance for the Big Blue. Here's a beanie. Nice release pass to find Talon Henniker. Cuts in on the right foot. Give and go from Ray. Nash went to ground, hands up in the air, just in her innocence quickly. Talon Henniker kept her feet, but that was a really delightful switch from Princess Abini just to find space for her teammate. Right, good tidy up work. Newborn can watch that harmlessly roll over the line. Well, it would be interesting to see if there was a decision made if Talon Henniker decided to go down. There was a little bit of contact, and Jessica Nash putting her hands up there. Lovely little ball in from Taylor Ray. She really is commanding this midfield, really pulling all the strings. 
switching that point of attack, looking for those probing little diagonal passes into her wide players. It certainly feels as though Taylor Ray is growing into the game, getting a dial in. We've seen a couple of those passes really release nicely for the Sydney FC attackers, but for now, Melbourne victory on the charge. Sky Blues with some defending to do. First line of defence, Mackenzie Hawksby. Up against Chidiak. Chidiak probably happy just to take the lead into the break, but even happier with the corner. Clever play from Chids there. Nice little back heel. Just a finest touch from Mackenzie Hawksby. Already scored one from a corner. A great time to add a third. Well, they've been good from corners this season. Coming into this game, and scored 10 goals from a corner. The 11th through the opening goal that Murphy got on the end of. The in swinger again, Beatty Go. Late in the first half. Can they add a third? Goad. Morrison again the target. Same play, and this time Jana Wyman goes to ground. It's a Sydney FC free kick. Well, they're aiming for the same place, weren't they? Exactly the same delivery from Beatty Goad. Kayla Morrison coming in there, maybe a little bit finer into that six yard box area. It's a little bit too much contact, very crowded around Jada Wyman. She was the one coming out. I think she did very well there. Played it well. She made the contact. Casey Rybelt decided it was in her favour. Well, there is the whistle from Casey Rybelt as victory. Walk off confidently in this opening half at Leichhardt Oval. Opening goal from Alana Murphy. A second from Rachel Lowe. There is so much to play for and a huge second half coming up. As Sydney FC nil to Melbourne victories two and well we mentioned just two goals but plenty of highlights to talk about each. I said Melbourne victory being really strong off set pieces and corners Kayla Morrison did really well checked in checked out got around Charlotte McLean just helped that ball on good delivery from Beatty Goad and Talon Henneker just awkward couldn't clear it properly and Alana Murphy little poachers goal there just to help that in to get Melbourne victory on their way a rather subdued celebration as well from Alana Murphy. But this moment, Ish. Yeah, just, I mean, I think Jada Wyman will look back on that. And think there was poor decision-making on her part. I've seen Rachel Lowe time and time again. Tuck these away, don't we? Even though Jada got a hand to it, picked the right way. But as we say, she's lucky to be on the pitch. It could have been double jeopardy. She could have got a red card. It could have been a penalty as well. But she got away with just having the yellow. Well, plenty to play for in this second half. Let's have a little look at the halftime match stats and the story they told. Victory handling the ball for the most part of possession and definitely dominating shots on target. What do the numbers tell us? Well, it's been reasonably even. I think Sydney FC, there was a good chance from Courtney Vine. I think they want to convert those total shots into better number of shots on target. Melbourne victory, seven shots, shots on target. I think they've been far more clinical with their opportunities presented, but big second half on its way. Huge second half on the other side. A Premier's plate in the air. Finals football on the line. Don't go anywhere. Plenty of action coming up. Well, welcome back to the second half of the Big Blue between Sydney FC and Melbourne Victory. As it stands, victory are in the finals and Sydney FC will await the result of Melbourne City against Perth, kicking off shortly. But for now, victory do have the lead here at Leichhardt Oval. Two goals to the good. And it's a very happy, well, I should say healthy crowd, more so at Leichhardt Oval. Maybe not so happy, but we'll have a little look at the goals that separate the result at the half-time break. This was the first of them, and it was Alana Murphy who got things underway for Melbourne victory. It was a great ball in by BD Goad. Kayla Morrison, just a nice little flick on there. And Kaylee talon Henneker. it was a bit awkward for her, hit her thigh. Alana Murphy on hand just to tuck that away to give Melbourne victory a nice little 1-0 lead. Well, there's been some good contests, some good battles. This one... A cynical moment, a regretful moment from Jada Wyman, no doubt. Hands a penalty to Melbourne victory, and Rachel Lowe, the former Sky Blue, makes no mistake. Oh, Rachel Lowe doing Rachel Lowe things from the penalty spot. 
I think Jada Wyman will look back on that, quite disappointed in the decision that she made. Alex Shidiak, a little bit of contact there, but also Jada Wyman being very lucky to stay on the pitch. She could have got a red card and then given away the penalty as well. But these two in midfield going at it, aren't they? Mackenzie Hawksby, just an absolute workhorse in there. They've had a few little niggles, haven't they, as well, Grace, against each other. Be interesting to see how it plays out in the second half. Indeed. The midfield battle is always going to be an interesting part of this afternoon's encounter. Some really good quality in amongst there. The second half underway here at Leichhardt Oval. Melbourne victory, two goals to the good. Sydney FC with a lot of work to do. Certainly have the personnel to do it. But a big second half coming up each in terms of adjustments. What do you expect to see? What do you imagine was the instruction? We'll come back and stay with play here at Shea Connors with the ball at her feet. Ball into the box is a good one. The flight, the run of Courtney Vine was timed to perfection, but the finish. Wasn't quite there, and that confirms my question to you. The substitute that we see, Shay Connors, has replaced Kaylee Talon Henneker, who had a lively first half. Yeah, exactly what Ante Juric needs. More play in those wide areas, more. to see Courtney Vine coming in. I mean, lovely ball from back to front. A little touch here from Shea Connors. We know she's got pace. Saw her use it. Know that she's used it. Scored plenty of goals for Brisbane Raw last season. And well, just Courtney Vine just misjudged that, didn't she? That was a huge opportunity. What I mean, what a great start to the second half. She got them back on the scoreboard. Well, there was a testy moment just there as Emily Gilnick and Shay Connors fronted up to one another. Gilnick not too happy with some attention. Just this moment here. Smiles, though. <laughs> well, Emily Gilnick's been in a few uh, kerfuffles, let's say, the last couple of weeks. Pointy end of the season. She's an absolute winner. She's back in the Matilda squad. Really wants to make an impression as well. Some neat touches from Gilnick, but again it's Chevet who's working hard to close the option down and does so. I think Chevet is probably frustrated Emily Gilnick in that first half, did very well defensively. It was a couple of times Em got in behind her, but Chevet was always very positive, trying to step in front, try and put pressure on her. And em sometimes gets frustrated on that being in a wider area where sometimes you would prefer to play in more central areas. But she's still got that pace, she's got that physicality. It's this real one-on-one -on -one battle on this right-hand side. Chidiak spinning on the ball. Comes back to Murphy. Spins out, goes the other way. Here's Morrison, has a bit of space in front. Looping ball over the top to Lowe and hefty into Jordan Thompson. The American at the back for Sydney FC. She was an injury replacement for injured captain Nat Tobin, who's done very well since coming into the Sky Blues. Chevet again. Dances past one. Nice ball out to the substitute, Shea Connors. Driving at Hanson, little chop and weave, good move from Connors, does get the shot away, but Morrison is there to intercept. Well, Shea Connors has made an instant impact just in terms of energy coming off the bench. That pass a little short. Gifts it and you see half a breath. And that's well done there by Rankin. Now 
Holman. As Beatty go to slow down. Chidiak glides forward. Here's Dapolonia. Checks off her line, Rachel Lowe. Gilnick drop of the shoulder. Does get the shot away, an awkward one. Crashes off the boot of McLean, who looks to have changed boots again. Here's Thompson. Now Beanie. Her pass can only find a victory shirt. And it's a good positive touch from Kayla Morrison. Good control possession from Victory. Been really impressed. I think Kayla Morrison's had a wonderful game for the Victory. Really just commanding at the back, organisational, positional play as well. Being able to step in front obviously had a big impact and influence on that first goal from the corner. Good game, good season for Kayla Morrison yet again. But now perhaps with some defending to do as Pizza Sabini moves forward on the edge of the 18-yard box. Hansen attempts the tackle. Labini, the cross in. Courtney Vine, opportunity at the far post. She's got her head in her hands and she knows. She knows how big a chance that was for the Sky Blues. Another huge chance goes begging for Courtney Vine. And one on the deck into the six-yard box. Now another chip into the back post from Princess Sabini. Just mistimed it, couldn't keep it down. Couldn't even keep it on target. As you say, head in her hand, she knows what a big opportunity that was. And especially at this point of the second half, we're only 52 on the 52nd minute. Already, Sydney positive signs, they're creating chances, they need to maintain that positivity. But also, they need to improve how clinical they are in front of goal. Not through lack of moments for Sydney FC and Cesavini. Certainly created that one. That's a great switch ball. Again, Courtney Vine with an opportunity. Marshalled well by Jamila Rankin. She's had a good afternoon keeping Courtney Vine quiet. But how about this for a switch pass? Great ball from Princess Sabini. But that's what you do when you've got someone like Courtney Vine in the space in behind. It's almost like you don't really need to pick her out. You just need to play it into the space and allow her quality and her pace to do the rest. But Jamila Rankin, very good defending there. Sydney again with another chance through a corner to be delivered by Mackenzie Hawksby once more. Hawksby a little unconvincing on the delivery. Helped back in. Low. She'll kick for distance. Shay Holman at the back. And turn and face forward for Sydney. So Zante Juric the first to turn to his bench. See shots on target there. Just the three for Sydney, seven for the victory. Back to that thought in a moment because here's Beatty Goad again. Swiveling on the ball, turning, drops back to Dapolonia. Now Murphy, the goal scorer. Morrison, tidy turn from Goad. Helped away by Thompson and to McLean. Put out of pressure well there, did Sydney FC. Nash is first to that one. I was going to ask Ishi Ante Juric turning to his bench first and bringing on Shay Connors. And a happy, healthy 4,500 at Leichhardt Oval, a wonderful, wonderful turnout. And you can just imagine the roar should Sydney FC find the back of the net. They've made one change, victory yet to, churn, to turn to their substitutions, but arguably it's the victory bench, bench the more experienced of the two. Let's go. ball over the top but the run from Nash was not on that occasion. Thompson 
tidied up well by Chidiak on that occasion. The crowd just started to get a little more involved here at Leichhardt. Looking to propel their team forward. At the moment, it's a Melbourne victory with their foot on the ball. Just very happy to keep comfortable possession. It was very different from the first half when it was really end-to-end -end stuff, wasn't it? Very transitional game, especially Melbourne victory. This is the time they've got the confidence they can control the possession, control the tempo. Sydney, who really have to do the chasing, need to win the ball back, need to create those opportunities. They've already created two great opportunities. Courtney Vine, I think, with two really guilt-edged chances that she'll be disappointed she hasn't converted at least one of those. Well, here's the speed on show from Courtney Vine and a well-timed challenge from Kayla Morrison. Had to be. Morrison again. Hanson coming across, sweeps that ball over the sideline. It's great to hear the Carrow getting into it, getting behind Sydney FC. Calls them Sydney forever. Real appetite for the A-League women's now, especially with so many returning Matildas. Courtney Vine, a real star of the Women's World Cup. One of the most impressive players for Sydney FC, scoring goals, having a great season, really leading the line for this team. We'll see other... Matilda's on show, Emily Gilnick for the victory. Elise Cullen Knight's on the bench as well. Good to see as well the Sydney FC men's team in the crowd today supporting the women's side. Thanks, Burgess, just shown there a few moments ago after the Sydney FC men's result last night. A fantastic win for the Sky Blues, it was over Central Coast Mariners. And they'll be hoping for a good result for their women this weekend too. But there's a big 30-plus minutes of football coming up for the Sky Blues to make something of this game. And we really need to push, it, keep pushing that one-club mentality. We've seen the success of it in the Women's Super League in Europe as well with the clubs like the Barcelonas, the Real Madrid, the Arsenals, the Chelsea. And really, for the continued development of the game here in Australia, domestically, we need to chain and turn that international success and the popularity of the Matildas into fandom for the A-League women's. With a hands in the air and apology for a misguided pass. As the shadow just lengthens over Leichhardt Oval, and I'm sure for the players in the shaded side of the field, they'll be enjoying a moment of reprieve. battle between Chauvet and Gilnick continues. It's been an entertaining one for the afternoon. Nice little give and go from Connors and Hawksby. Eyes up, Mackenzie Hawksby. First time ball in from Chauvet. Comes off the shin of Alana Murphy. It's a sky blue corner. This will be interesting. I'm just talking about the sun there before, Grace, and the shadow coming across. It's at an awkward angle right in the eyes of Courtney Newbon and the Melbourne victory goal. I think personally, Kenzie Hawksby keeps this nice and low, driven in. You can see Courtney Newbon already putting her glove up, trying to shade, shield her eyes from the sun. Hawksby, corner delivered in. It's good rising header from Tori Tumith. Again, the target, the 23-year-old. And once more, just cannot redirect her header goalward. Another great delivery in by Mackenzie Hawksby. Difficult to see. Tori Tumath just mistimed that jump slightly. Again, difficult to defend in that with the sun in your eyes. Probably difficult for her to read the flight of the ball. Tumath should love to get on the end of those ones and find the back of the net. By my math, her 50th A-League appearance. And a wonderful season Tumath is having with the Sky Blues. clearance from Jess Nash will keep the ball in Sydney FC's attacking half. Chauvet. Now Holman. 
plane and Chiak is hurrying. It's a drag from Chavez that's poked away from Hansen. Connors has taken a bit of a mean deflection. Yvonne had committed, but Morrison is able to clear for her side. Still with Sydney. Coleman just switching the point of attack. Playing long ball over the top, almost a very good one. It does drop still to Sydney FC. Here's Tori Tumas. Nice shot, deflected off Melbourne Victory's defence. Still alive for Sydney. That final pass, only finding the feet of a Victory defender. I think Shay Connors is really disappointed, really frustrated that that ball. I think she had a better angle. Tori Tumith coming in as well. Shea Connors thought she could get a little touch on this, but Tumith decided she wanted to have the angle for the opportunity. But they keep probing, don't they, Sydney FC? You can see Melbourne Victory struggling to maintain many passages of play of possession. It's all Sydney FC at the moment. All Sydney FC, all Courtney Vine. Shot on the left foot, doesn't have the leverage. Well, it's been a lively second half so far for the Sky Blues. Still not having the lion's share of possession, but certainly having the lion's share of chances into this second half. Yeah, and you even notice most of the play is actually happening down this side with the shadow on it. It's very difficult to read the play, read the ball when the sun's getting to that low point on that left-hand side. Much easier to tell your angles, tell your distances without that sun in your eye. Here's Morris. That's Hanson. Tidy turn from Alana Murphy. Ash searching forward for Gilnick. She'd love to do a little more attacking. Emily Gilnick, she's had to put a lot of work in and some defensive duties. So we'll see another change or the first change for victory this afternoon. As experienced campaigner Leah Privatelli takes the place of Rachel Lowe. Or all smiles for Rachel Lowe. And Privatelli in her 13th appearance of the season, the 29-year-old, she's a one-club player, but Lowe can be pleased with her performance this afternoon. And I think this is a great substitution from Jeff Hopkins. I like to see Ems being kind of contained on this right-hand side. Emily Gilnick, now she's in the middle, can be more of a target player where she's a bit more comfortable. I like that he's seen that. Rachel Lowe has done a fantastic job in there, but you want to utilise that ability of Emily Gilnick with that physicality trying to get in front, try and put this game to bed with potentially another goal, create chances for her within the width of that six-yard box where she loves to be. It's a good run forward from Jamila Rankin and talking of exactly that, Emily Gilnick recently recalled into the Matildas, moves to the centre of the park, finds the back of the net. What an introduction, what a substitute. That moment, that change and the shift for Melbourne victory. That's a beautiful finish. Well, a lovely little play on this left-hand side. Love this from Jamila Rankin. I mean, that's a tough angle for Emily Gilnick to find. She was coming back and away from goal. Didn't try and put too much pace on it. Didn't try and hit it too hard. Little bounce of the ball. Just tried to flick it around the corner. Flicked it into that near post top corner. Jada Wyman probably caught off guard, but a lovely finish and a lovely bit of play here on this left-hand side for Melbourne victory. Well, Jamila Rankin has worked oh so hard all afternoon. And that's a very handy cutback. And you mentioned it exactly that, Alicia Ferguson. Gilnick moving to the middle of the park, being more of that target player. And her first touch in that position, she does exactly that. 3-0 victory to the good. And it's not an easy skill to execute either. But as I say, what she did do, just tried to help it on, really like flick it round the corner. 
big question is now, what does Sydney FC do to respond to this? 3-0 down. It's not like they haven't been creating opportunities. They have created opportunities. This may be a game where they'll look back and they haven't been clinical enough in front of goal. It's just after the substitution as well. Leah Privatelli coming on, reshuffling the deck. Gilnick moving centrally. A good run from Jamila Rankin and a well-worked finish. It's almost like that breaking play is just what victory needed to add another. I also think for someone like Emily Gilnick, when she is getting a bit frustrated, and this is how Jeff Hopkin knows her so well. Jeff Hopkin has known Emily Gilnick since she was at Brisbane Raw as a young player, and he understands if she's getting marked out of a game or she's not being involved, she needs to build that confidence. And I think that was a really good substitute from Jeff. There will be another change for Sydney FC and perhaps a response. Zara Kruger, 17-year-old, her 15th appearance of the season. Taylor Ray makes way after an industrious performance in the middle of the park. Kruger, we'll see how this shuffles the pack for Ante Juric's side. It's a Melbourne victory free kick, but each at this point, Sydney looking to get back into this. Are they looking to limit damage control at this point in the game? We'll come back to that thought as we go it's up and over. I think at 3-0 down, Grace, there is no damage limitation. There is actually, if you want to go for the Premiership, you need to do something and make something happen and be really positive. I think it's difficult to shift the momentum. We're coming close to the last 20 minutes of this game, and I think Melbourne Victory have looked very solid in defence. No, there has been those opportunities. I think Courtney Vine's going to reflect on this and be frustrated that she missed a couple of really good opportunities to put them in front or to, sorry, minimise the deficit for Melbourne victory. But the biggest difference has been chances to the shots to shots on target and actually how they've converted that ratio. That's a good hold-up play there by Gilnick. And there's exactly that, shots on target. Eight to victory, four to Sydney. Read well once more by Margot Chauvet. I mean, that, that stat statistic speaks for itself, doesn't it? 89% shooting accuracy from Melbourne Victory and only 44% from Sydney FC. That's not one that they'll be looking forward to reviewing during the next week. So two that Jeff Hopkins spoke about through the week was the scenario planning with their team, whether they went up, whether they went down, how they would respond to certain situations. Well prepared coming into this, as I'm sure, of Sydney FC. A positive response from Victory, you've got to say, though, after their loss to Newcastle the week before. Sydney FC, of course, looking for a positive response after their loss to, to Canberra throughout the week. Leah Pivatelli picks herself up a yellow card for a bit of a late challenge on Chauvet. I think it's her innocence, but definitely late to the challenge. She's had a wonderful game, hasn't she, Chauvet? As we see Princess Beanie having a bit of a break. Well, Aideen Keane. Good, strong player on the ball, pace to burn. An attacking outlet is Connors. Sizing up Nash. Left foot across into the box. Clears everyone. Courtney Vine will chase. Poked away by Rankin. Sydney FC certainly capable given the personnel they have on the park of pulling something back out of this game. The victory, as you mentioned, Ish, have looked very solid this afternoon. They certainly have. See Jeff Hopkins there up and about. He doesn't want to, one, concede, and two, 
wants to make sure that his team don't take the foot off the pedal. Tally tidy little turn there. Nice little in flick, inside flick from Emily Gilnick. You see the big question, Sydney FC, how do we change the momentum? How do we actually start creating more chances? I think Melbourne Victory, that third goal is really taking the wind out of their sails. This is a great position, by the way, with the sun. Beady go. If I was her, I would be going directly for that far post. Keeping it relatively low. Few people running in front of Jada Wyman. Make it difficult for her. Busy box. Ball lofted in by Go, does exactly that. Parried over the top by Jada Wyman, the sun in her eyes. There you see what she was trying to do, just loop it in. Jada Wyman read that well. Nice and steady, nice and safe there. It really is, this sun could play in here. I mean, you do see, we have seen it, Grace. There's not too much play on that left hand side where the sun is. Even when players are trying to play, switch out the play it's difficult to actually for your eyesight to adjust when you're going from that shade into that brightness Lana Murphy to take an in swinger from the right side nice tidy set of hands from Jada Wyman looks to release the team but it's picked up by the corner taker in Alana Murphy straight back into the action Victory at the moment. Do look very comfortable on the ball. Yeah, there's also a level of freedom and relaxation you get to play when you're three 0 up. You know, it's it's nothing that you need to do. The game's all wrapped up. You need to stay nice and compact. Really for Sydney FC, they're the ones that have to change this up a little bit. Really don't have too much momentum. Oh, he's fine. Bit of space in front. Releases Aideen Keane. Oh, victory plays in front. So they've got plenty of players behind the ball, don't they? I think there was one or two Sydney FC players, Aideen Keane and that right hand side. Shea Connor's kind of sneaking in on that far post. Melbourne victory, really. This back four has been really steady and assured today. Stayed in close proximity to each other. Kayla Morrison's had a wonderful game. I mean, hugely experienced. You know, she's pulling the strings back there. She's coordinating everything. She's been stepping in, intercepting. Had a hand in that first goal from that corner as well. Heads away for victory. Back in by McLean. The victory just really starting to slow things down. Take the tempo out of this game. Got it back by Chevet. It's Dapolonia. Nice inside ball, Dapolonia. Mistimed pass to the run of Kruger or Vine, but Vine's picked up possession well for the Sky Blues. Here's Holman. Holman again. Sydney just looking for a way through a really compact Melbourne victory defensive shape. Now Chevet, that touch just evaded her. It's a long searching ball. That's over the sideline for a victory throw. This will still be the danger of Sydney FC committing more players forward. A nice compact shape of Melbourne victory, but looking for those long balls using the pace of Primatelli and Emily Gilnick. Alana Murphy to take a break.
fantastic performance from the young Matilda. Her 50th A-League appearance, a goal to boot. Takes a well-deserved rest on the bench, high fives from the coaching staff. I must admit, I did think Melbourne Victory had really lost something without Elise Keller Knight in midfield, but they didn't have Alana Murphy as well. But really today, I think Alana Murphy has been great. Dapolonia has been great in there. And now to just be able to bring on the experience of Elise Keller Knight, again in that holding midfielder position, just sweeping in front of your back four. But she's been out for a few weeks with concussion. Just make sure that they don't take any chances and try and keep this game contained. Elise Keller Knight, her 16th appearance of the season for Melbourne Victory course, having returned from that nasty Achilles rupture last year and a really torrid injury run, but fantastic to see Keller Knight back playing more regular football. I mean, you've got a player of her quality, the likes of Keller Knight, to be an option off the bench. Well, that's a pretty comfortable position to be in for Jeff Hopkins. Yeah, and we've spoken about Melbourne Victory potentially being the favourites for so much quality. Alex Shidiak coming back into the team, Elise Keller Knight, Lydia Williams. They've had some injury issues. Of course they have. It's been a difficult season to try and get that consistency. I think them themselves will be quite frustrated in that with potential performances and, and even just not being able to go on and finish games where they've, they've been in the ascension. But I think today they've executed their game plan really well. And, I mean, they've been let off a couple of times by Sydney FC, Jada Wyman for that decision. A couple of chances for Courtney Vine. But as far as making the most of the opportunities that have presented themselves, they have been the better of the team and deserve to be 3-0 up. Tension's just starting to flare a little here. Jess Nash, Mackenzie Hawksby. It's unlike Mackenzie Hawksby to be in there. Come on, give me the good ball back. Hurry up, let's get this game going. Not too blue. It's big, big blue, tensions. big blue, big tensions. Three nil down. Frustration showing as well. Mackenzie Hawksby, such a winner, has set herself and the team such high standards as well. As a real leader in this team, so vocal as well on the pitch. Gets through a ton of work and also directing traffic. A little tug of the shirt in the middle of the park there by Chevet, just slowing things down and. Victory won't mind too much. They'll take as much time as they like here. Yeah, absolutely no rush whatsoever. I mean, look at those two players. Matilda's legends there. Alex Chidiak, Elise Keller Knight. Huge amount of experience. I think Chidiak's had a really good game as well. Been quite busy. You know, she's been pretty closely marked by Mackenzie Hawksby. They've had some nice little argy-bargy in the middle of the pitch there. Killer Knight, two times FIFA Women's World Cup All-Star team and speaks to the quality. A difficult week it has been for Sydney FC. Midweek loss to Canberra United. They could have wrapped up the Premiership then. And this hill looking a little steeper to climb. 3-0 down, just over 12 minutes to play, plus a bit of stoppage time. We know that they're guaranteed a top two position. If it wasn't going to be the first spot, then perhaps the second, depending on the result between City and Perth, just kicking off shortly. So come back to that thought in a moment. Can they make a case to try and get a goal back in that cross, just escaping the run of Shea Connors? Well, they're the times when it's the most frustrating, isn't it? When you think you've had the opportunity, they had that game against Canberra in midweek, lost to them today, haven't put away their chances that they have had. Credit to Melbourne Victory, I think they've played very well. It's been an entertaining game, even in some capacities, but you know, it's, that is, if, some, if a team outplays you, then you kind of accept it a lot. It's a lot easier to accept than if you've had those opportunities, you've missed those opportunities yourself. That's when you kind of walk off thinking, no, we didn't do enough. We weren't good enough. Well, still time. FC to mount some sort of argument back into this fixture. Keen with a 
Tortelli. Looks to scoop it away. Morrison positioned well again. Chevet drives it to space. Can't quite connect her pass, but at least Kellen Knight can. Here comes Chidiak. Long release pass to Beattie Goad, and she's asking a bit much of it, but Goad obliges. First time cross into the box. Chevet nods away. Holman helps on, but Sydney FC pinned into their own defensive third here. Goad shoulder just needed a bit of support finds it in Rankin and that makes from go and just to keep the ball in somehow or another does BD go Rankin comfortable to concede a bit of territory Some under pressure from the substitute in Aideen Keane just make its way over for a Sydney FC goal kick. I think after that first chase, Beattie Goan was just thinking, God, Kayla, not again. <laughs> I've got nothing left in me for the second one. She did really well holding up the ball on that left-hand side, just trying to soak up the minutes in this last 10 minutes of the match, use up as much time as possible. This game really is opening up, big spaces in between. He's keen. Nice little release pass right down the middle for Mackenzie Hawksby. The idea was right, the link-up play between Keane and Vine to open up things really nicely. It was good vision here, wasn't it, from Kruger. Nice little dinking ball, as I say, plenty of space there. It'll flick on. Nice little touch in. There will be more gaps opening up as players fatigue. Kind of whether they step in or just try and hold their ground. Well, I actually thought that was a foul by Chin Thomas a bit. Anyway. I like this. Love this positivity with Chins. Go on at it. I thought it just kind of pulled it out. Not too much in that. But hey, it's just more more seconds that are going to be soaked up for Melbourne victory. Look, Jeff Hopkins, he's still in there. He's still <laughs> he doesn't want to give anything away. He's been he's been very very vocal this afternoon for the whole match. Just shows you how much. He's trying to will the players on, make sure they maintain their focus and their intensity throughout the whole 90 minutes. Momentary break in play is Emily Gilnick just receives a little bit of attention. This does Chidiak. To see Gilnick back to her feet, we know that she's been ravaged with injuries, returning from a calf injury finding a way back to really good fitness and the stats and results recently is what's happened her, earned her call up back into the Matilda squad. Yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster of a journey for Emily Gilnick, missing out on the World Cup squad last year. And a few injuries, as you say. Really trying to maintain that focus, maintain that belief as well. And I think a big part of that, again, Jeff Hopkins, he's maintained that belief in her, given her the confidence to get back to her best, given her had the patience as well, not trying to rush her. And even talking to Em, she's even when injured, she's in and around the training pitch, she's in and around training sessions, she's trying to give information, she wants to help out the younger players, she still wants to be within the team environment. It's been really important for her. Certainly one of the most disciplined and committed players you'll meet, Emily Gilnick. Chidiak have made their way back onto the field. Nice touches by Connors. Sydney FC just not quite having the numbers forward and Courtney Newbon also happy to slow things down. Mentioned 
Jeff Hopkins. Still not quite satisfied at 3-0 down. Asking a little more of his players late into the game and these moments of concentration seen out of game. Yeah, I was having a little chuckle there, Grace. Very familiar voice. He was willing, KK, at least Kellen Knight, just to hold her position in midfield. Even though the game is opening up, there's no reason for them to try go chasing the ball to put Sydney FC under any pressure. Try and invite them onto them to see if they can break down this very compact Melbourne victory defence late in this game. There's no reason why they need to go out chasing balls. Ideas right there for Sydney FC. Jess Nash manages comfortably as victory turned to the bench once more for the afternoon. Not before players quickly put back into play. Chavez cross just fine in the side netting. Paige Zoyce, who has come onto the field, 20-year-old in the 15th appearance of the season. She's replaced Emily Gilnick after a hard-worked afternoon. Certainly was from Emily Gilnick, wasn't it? She was out in that wide position, being marked really well by Chevet for Sydney FC. And that change with Rachel Lowe, scored an absolute cracker of a goal. And it made an impact very, very quickly when she moved into the centre of the park and a great time to give her a rest. Sydney FC looking for a charge forward again, managed well by Jamila Rankin, who too has been steadfast at the back for victory this afternoon. Tapalonia in no real rush to go forward. It does well. Just gives away the free kick, Sydney FC to turn things right away quickly. Yeah, Bit of hidden hope there for the Sky Blues. As we tick over into the final three minutes of regulation time and it feels as though perhaps a little too steep to climb at this point going forward. Hawksby. Switch ball to Shea Connors. Russia Bay. Back to Thompson. It's been playing. Driving into midfield. Under the foot of Zara Kruger. Victory kick for distance. And all eyes will be on the game after this one. Perth Glory playing host to Melbourne City. Should Melbourne City win that, that will hand them the Premier's plate. If they lose and Perth Glory win that game, Sydney FC can still be awarded Premiers. It's a lot to play for, I think current circumstances in Melbourne City. I mean, in Perth's current form, they haven't been great towards the second end, half of the season, have they? It's interrupted well by Morrison. I think it's the, the Premiership is, is probably for Melbourne City to lose at this point, particularly against Perth, despite the long journey over there. I think with the quality that they've got in their team, the amount of possession that they retain, Perth have really struggled to to really, I mean, they started the season so well, didn't they? And then they've just fallen away. It'd be a huge upset. Perth got the win over City. Chidiak still full of running for victory. She'll slow things down and take the ball right into the corner. Good strength thrown on the ball by Chidiak, and she's done really well there again to produce a corner for her side. Absolute quality. That's the experience of Alex Chidiak. So frustrating when you're 3-0 down. You're trying to continue the play, get it going quickly, but Sydney FC just have lost that. That third goal really just stifled there. Any chance that they had to come back into this game. And victory, so much confidence. They 
they really struggled to create more chances. Zoys, corner taking duties for victory. Sydney FC looking a dejected side, but they can be incredibly proud of what they've produced this season as well. The season is far from over for both of these teams, it would seem. Five minutes of stoppage time. that one in Sydney FC will launch an attack forward. Ball finds its way over the line. Fairly subdued Sydney FC bench. Yeah, it's not too much. Ante Juric or his coaching staff can do at this point in time to just leave the players to it. It'll be a lost opportunity. All credit to victory. They've come here played really well, they've converted their chances. Sydney FC not being able to do the same thing, especially, and then they've had two losses on the bounce as well, that midweek game against Canberra. First time attempt by Mark, and so Charlotte McLean has played over for a victory. Goal kick as well, Sydney FC up against Melbourne victory in this big blue, blue clash, undefeated in their last four head-to-heads. The last one a draw, the three prior to that went in the sky blue's favour. So Melbourne victory to travel to Leichhardt Oval in front of a vocal Sydney FC, largely crowd. It's been quite a resolute performance. Yeah, look at that, shots off target. Sydney FC five shots off target, Melbourne victory zero. Seen the accuracy of shooting as well. Percentages were quite high for the Melbourne victory compared to Sydney FC. And that's been the story of the match. It's been the story of the match. Not as if they haven't created chances. They just haven't been able to get them on target and haven't been clinical enough. No nonsense defending there from Melbourne victory. Thompson. Halfway through the allotted stoppage time. Victory with good numbers behind the ball as Sydney just try and find one last attack forward. Consolation goal perhaps. Does drop to Keane. Tries to turn on the pass. Here's Courtney Vine. Can she put it through to Aiden Keane? Interrupted by Go. Chidiak, good release option. Here's that battle again. Chidiak, Hawksby grappling at the ball. And Hawksby's done well there. Sydney FC goal kick. Yeah, she's been quite frustrated today, hasn't she, Mackenzie Hawksby? Stayed pretty tight. Her and Alex Chidiak haven't been too far away from each other during most of this match. It's been a nice battle. Obviously, Alex Chidiak has got the benefit of. Kenzie Gold to be really frustrated, disappointed with this result. Especially when they've had such a solid defence all season, haven't they? To concede three goals at this stage of the season, and their second consecutive loss, it's tough to take coming into finals and allowing the Premiership to be taken out of your hands. Well, they'll know that. Such a good defensive side, Sydney FC. Prior to this afternoon's fixture, just 16 goals conceded for the season. Incredible. Built on solid defence, and not just in the likes of Jada Wyman, but the whole back four for Sydney FC, in large part, have done very well across the course of the season. Just, just, just Nash, excuse me, just picking up a yellow card for some time wasting late in this one. You talk about how well John Wyman's been during the, throughout the season, but then with her decision to kick out at Alex Chidiak, that made it, gave him a penalty. Rachel Lowe dispatched it 2 0. 
changes the momentum of the game. They're those little things that you have to look back on and say, well, it was our own, our own fault. Can't really blame anyone else. Five minutes of stoppage time. It's ticking to a close. And any remaining moments will be in the hands of referee Casey Rybell. Still in play. Chidiak, can she put the cherry on top and find the back of the net for a fourth goal? In fact, she can. Alex Chidiak makes no mistake. And with her first goal of the season, she all but secures finals if they weren't already for her Melbourne victory side. It's 4-0, Melbourne victory. Well, just tired legs, Charlotte McLean at the back. Lots of fatigue, won it back. Alex Chidiak had plenty of energy towards the second half. At the end of the second half, nice little touch, tucks it away past Jada Wyman to make it 4 0 to Melbourne victory. Nice big celebratory jump on Emily Gilnick. Jeff Hopkins is in the background there saying, Calm down, everyone, calm down. It's all right, we're 4 0 up, Jeff. But a well deserved victory. And there is the full time whistle here at Leichhardt Oval. It's a statement win for Jeff Hopkins' side as Melbourne Victory charge into finals football yet again. A huge three points for Victory bumps the Western Sydney Wanderers out of finals football. And Sydney FC await their fate in the result of the Glory City game kicking off shortly. Well, celebrations deservedly so for the Melbourne Victory team. They were strong, they were disciplined, they came to Leichhardt Oval with a task. And they have well and truly completed that. Well, let's have a little look at the four goals that were the difference today. Well, I thought Kayla Morrison had a brilliant game in defense this time, having an impact on the, on the attack. Talon Henniker, an all good one for her, bounced off her thigh. And Alana Murphy on hand just to tuck that away to set Melbourne victory on their way. This was a controversial moment, perhaps not controversial at all. Well, just poor decision making from Jada Wyman. The game was at 1 0. Gave Rachel Owen an opportunity. We've seen her tuck away so many penalties this season, despite Jada Wyman. She was lucky to stay on the pitch, could have had a red card and given away the penalty. But really, no need for her to kick out at Alex Chidiak. Two first half goals for the victory, and this coming just after Jeff Hopkins made his first substitute for the afternoon, and it pushed Emily Gilnick, as you said, Ish, into more of a central position. That's right, Rachel Lowe coming off. I thought this was a great substitute and a great tactical change from Jeff Hopkins. Emily Gilnick in her preferred, more central position. Lovely little play by Beanie Goad. Out to that left hand side, Jamila Rankin, Rankin taking on Courtney Vine. And look at this nice little clip in. Didn't try and hit it too hard. Clipped it into the top corner. Jada Wyman having no chance whatsoever. And then just to top it off, some tired legs there. Charlotte McLean and Alex Chidiak. Just a nice little one-two between feet to take that. Give herself another angle. Just take it to the left and tuck it away past Jada. Well, cherry on top after a strong performance from Melbourne Victory this afternoon. As we have a little look at the full-time match stats that tell us exactly the story that I think we saw for a lot of that match. Each it's victory who have come out well, well and truly victorious. That's right, not just in the possession stakes, but really those total shots, 10 shots to in total and nine on target. They really did take an opportunity. Courtney Vine had a couple of opportunities early in the second half, but all credit to Melbourne victory to what was a very accomplished performance. Well, a statement win for Melbourne Victory as they lead into finals football. It finishes here at Leichhardt Oval, Sydney FC nil, Melbourne Victory for From all the team here, Ish Ferguson and myself, Grace Gill, many thanks for tuning in this afternoon.